Uh, we wanted to pray for our young ladies and young men. We're just going to, they're going to hear to come in and just lay the word of God down before them. We're going to receive all that they have for them tonight and bless God for them. Amen. Come on, we come, uh, give God a shout of hallelujah and we give it to come before them with a song on them tonight. Come on, give shout of hallelujah.
walk that God has called set up the things for us tonight. Amen? Amen. So we pray that on tonight as they get ready to come. And share in the word of God on tonight. We would that you pray for them and then receive all that the Spirit of God have for each of you all on tonight. So our reader that's reading, Brother Jackson is going to read with her uh, for us on tonight. Uh, uh, pray for one ye the other as they get ready to come forth on tonight. Uh, let us pray. Well, come on, Ella Duncan. The brother's going to come and pray for us, and then we're getting ready. Sister Abigail, Sister Markeisha, Brother Adarai, and Brother Marquette. We're going to come in that order after the praying uh, for our sons and daughters. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, just so much uh, uh, for your holy Sabbath on the eve of the Sabbath. We just thank you just for your goodness and most of all for your mercy because your mercy endures to all generation father we pray as we go into your word on this evening as we look into the scripture we pray that you give us understanding that we can walk thereby we pray that we want to be a follower of your word line upon line precept upon precept hear a little and there a little, and most certainly we want to fall out of self, out of our way, and most certainly to embrace your way of life. Because we have sought you, and you said, very few shall find this way, uh, this straight and narrow way. We pray, Father, that you know now hearts and mind to receive the good word of God. Continue to strengthen your strength, your guiding, most of all, your love. Thank you for the woman that anointed the feet of our Savior for memorial unto when he was in the flesh. We thank you so much. And your son, Emmanuel the Christ, amen. Shalom. My name is Abigail, and the title of my message today is The Power of the Tongue. Again, the title of my message is The Power of the Tongue. That's, that's kind of close. A lot of people really don't understand how powerful the tongue is. God gave us a weapon. It's not as strong as his word, but he gave us this tongue to use it. Not to speak evil against one another, but to enlighten each other and give grace into each other through his word. We will begin this in Proverbs 18 and verse 20 through 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increases of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. You have a choice to speak life or death with on yourself or even others. So I suggest you be very careful with the things that proceed from out of your mouth. Only speaking those things of life and the blessing which God has promised unto us and not the curses which, which could lead to death. Now we will turn to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue, his tongue from evil, and his lips that speak that they speak no guile. God said, those who love your life, yeah. speak only no evil, speak only the positive of his words. If you don't speak positive or, or, or you continue to speak evil, you are cutting your life short, but don't even know it. Now we return to Colossians 4 and verse 6. Let your speech always let your speech be always with with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Everything that proceeded your mouth should be able to be to be said to your mother, your brother, your pastor, regardless of who it is. Everything you say should be speaking with grace. 
Now we return to Ephesians 4 and verse 26. I'm sorry, 29. And it reads, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let no corrupt communication, where is communication with a friend, with the mother, with the brother, or even standing behind the pulpit teach, teaching God's word. He said, no, let no corrupt thing proceed out of your mouth. Even if we are God, we know that nothing corrupt should come out of our mouths anyway, as, as many of us claim to be so holy. Now we return to Proverbs 10. I'm sorry, we're going to skip that one. That's just an extra in there. It's Matthew 15 and verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. The Lord has said, not what you put in your mouth defiles you, but what comes out of your mouth. The words that come off of your tongue defiles who you are. So I suggest you be careful with the things that you say. God is listening to each and every word that cometh out of your mouth, and he take them lightly. So be, be aware and careful of the things that come out of your mouth. Now we return to Proverbs 21 and verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. The words say, we all know that we have two ears and one mouth. It's best that you listen way more than what you speak that comes out of your mouth. Listen to, just listen to what people say. Keep your mouth so that you keep yourself from being in trouble. It's best that you hold your tongue at certain times and just let the Lord handle it because we know that he, he can handle it far better than what we can. Right, amen. Now we return to Proverbs 26 and verse 18 through 28. As a man who casts the firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Where no, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is, is no tail bear, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tail bear are as, are as, as, I'm sorry. The words of a tail bear are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like the, a post postured, uh, covered with silver dross. He that hateth he did hate the semblance with his lips, and layeth up the seat with, within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the, the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ru ruin. You need to be aware of the conversation that you are having with certain people. Amen. Some conversations are just worthwhile walking away. Hold your tongue and let that what they spoke upon you come back upon themselves. God, know, God said what he'll do for those people upon his children. He told you not to mess with his because what he had for you, you cannot handle. So I suggest that you be careful with the conversations you have. Just hold your tongue and walk away and let the Lord handle it. Now we return to Proverbs 31 and verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Here it is, we're talking about the virtuous women of the, of the world, which are in the Bible study group of Israel. Every time we open our mouth, it is full of wisdom unto the people. We speak not of those things that may harm or put down others, but lift them up, because we are the virtuous women of God. Amen. Now we return to Psalms 34, verses 13 through 16. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are, upon their, un, are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. 
God has said plenty of time in his word, keep your tongue from evil. Get away from them things that have harmed you or harmed others. Keep your tongue. He's not worried about what they said, but he told his people to keep your tongue. Yes. Depart from evil. Get away from those people who speak in these things or bring a destruction upon themselves. They go around always saying, I'm broke. I don't have this. They doing this to me. They killing me. Get away from those things. That is not of God. We know who it is of, and we do not put ourselves in the midst of that man. God will be righteous unto those who do this thing. He hears the cry of his people. All you have to do is do what his word has called you to do, and he will bless you. Now we will end this in James 1, verses 19 through 26. Hallelujah. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be, if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway, for, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Yes, if any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure, pure religion and, un, and undefiled before God, and the Father in this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. As I said earlier, the Lord said, be swift to hear and slow to speak. Do these things in Christ, James. I know, and he, then he, be, he say, be slow to wrath. I know Israel. Somebody say something we don't like or do something we don't. We quick to go off and jump off. God said, don't do that. Let me handle it. All you have to do is keep your tongue, seek God, and let him perform his miracles. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah, saint. The power of your tongue. Uh, we're supposed to use it, as she said, to bless people, not to speak damnation over people. We're supposed to use it to bless ourselves and not curse ourselves. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. The next daughter, get ready to come forward with the word of God on tonight. Hallelujah. God favor us, saint. Bless you, daughter. Hello. Um. I'm Markeisha. The title of my message is God Favors His Chosen People. Um, I want to start it off with a question. What does that mean to have favor? I mean, you hear that little saying, um, you, sh you shouldn't show favoritism or you can't show favoritism. But I know for a fact I'm a witness that God uh, shows favoritism or favors his chosen people. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not the only one that can witness it. I know everyone in here can witness it. So... Let's start this in Psalms 105, uh, verse 6, and see who God's chosen people are. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. <laughs> now keep that in mind, J you children of Jacob, his chosen. Let's go to Genesis 32 and read verses 28. Genesis 32 and 28. And he said, Thy name shall be no, called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Jacob, in, in, in verses, uh, in Psalms 106, it says, You children of Jacob is chosen. Um, this verse just tell you, Jacob is no longer called Jacob, but Israel. Keep that in mind for when we go to, De let's go to Deuteronomy in 7 and 6 and read. And we're going to start off in verse 6 and read that. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So this verse just pulls together verses um, in Psalms 105 and 6 and Genesis 32 and 28. As we just said, 
in uh, Genesis 32, Jacob will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. In Psalms 105, it said, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. That means Jacob or Israel is his chosen people. So that means for us, I am God's chosen people, and just everybody in here is uh, called Israel. We are God's chosen people. Now, this message stemmed from about a month ago, me and one of these ladies at work was talking, and in the middle of the conversation that we were having, she said, God don't favor you. And I said, girl, honey, where do you want me to start? And she said, well, just start from the beginning. And I was going to go, just just give it to her. And I, and I heard the Spirit say, no, just, just keep quiet. So instead of me saying what I wanted to say, I just, I just said, I keep his commandments. So, Sister Zaina, let's read into Deuteronomy. Let's get down to verses 11 and 12 and read what God says about keeping his commandments. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore unto thy fathers. And that's one of the biggest and greatest things that the Father has asked of you to do, to keep his commandments, and you will inherit the blessings and all that he, he had for us, for our uh, forefathers. So just pick it up, uh, Sister Zion, in verses uh, 13 and 14, and see what the blessings of, so some of the blessings of keeping his commandments. And he will love thee, and bless thee, and multiply thee, he will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thy oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep, and the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There should not be male or female bearing among you, or among your cattle. Can you read verses 14, just that first verse, I mean, just that first sentence over again? Thou shalt be blessed above all people. <laughs> I know for a fact that that, that, is a, that is so true for me. You're going to be blessed among all people. And I say for myself, I'm, uh, we all know, I work at Sims Murphy Clinic. It's over 300 employees there, maybe 400 or so employees there. People that I have never even met if, uh, when I've been there are people that I'm still meeting to this day. They know who I am because God has God blessed me to work just as hard and as good as brother, my dad, Brother Mark. Um, he blessed me to work just as good and as hard as them. That I have no clue who they are, but they know exactly who I am because of the work that I do. And not only that, but, but I have nurses that coming up to me and just just begging, pretty much begging for me to work into that clinic because God gave me the favor to do what I do really good. And I've all even had some nurses to come up and like just go over my head to my manager to make sure I got a raise, a good raise when we got our raises back in March. So. If that ain't favor and blessings among all people, then I don't know what is. Um, so let's uh, pick it up in verse 15, Zaina. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all of them that hate thee. Let's read a little bit more about the diseases in Psalms 91, starting at uh, verses 5, five and 6. Psalms 91, 5 through 6. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Now, we all know the pandemic that's been running spread wide in, um, since the end of 2019. But because I've kept his commandments and kept myself and he has favor over me i haven't, haven't haven't had any of those little light afflictions i may have had like the little common colds but because god has had favor over me and over my family over the bible study group of israel we haven't suffered the long term of any of the things that's been going on in this world so i pray i pray and i thank god for that um and i thank god that all is well so continue reading in verse seven sister Zaina. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Now, Sister Zaina is a, is a great example of this. Everyone know a few weeks ago of the things that happened at, at Campbell Clinic. But what some didn't know, that Sister Zaina was right across the hall from everything that went, went on. But because God had favor over her, and he was, she, that she is his, his chosen child, his, his chosen people, nothing came to her. She walked right out of that building with no hurt, harm, or danger over her body. Everything was all well over there because Sister Zaina is God's chosen, chosen people. And because he had so much 
favor and love for her just because she was at our specialist group that day. Nobody could be harmed in that. The scripture just told you that a thousand should fall on one side and the right, a, a ten thousand on the other side, and none will come come before thee. Nothing came before her or anybody of our specialist group that day. And if, to me, I believe that was, uh, deserves a hallelujah for every for all of that. So um, let's end this in Deuteronomy 28, verses 9 and 10. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. I started off and I, in, the, in the beginning of my message and I asked, what does, what does it mean to have favor? I truly hope that I have answered your question, uh, answered my own question, and gave you a true understanding of God's chosen people and his uh, favor over his chosen people because God truly does favor his chosen people. Shalom. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. I mean, they know that God favors you on tonight. Hallelujah. Truly do, saints. Well, listen, we're getting ready to go right along. Come on, give God another shout of hallelujah for our daughters. Lady Marquisha, Lady Abigail on tonight. Now our brother and they're getting ready to come. Our young elder brother, Brother Jones, the Rye. Come on, Brother Jackson. Come on, get your reading together. And then after him, Brother Marquette is coming on tonight. Uh, give God another shout of hallelujah for the word of God. Shalom, everybody. The title of my message is, If God is all you have, then God is all you need. Give me one second. Okay. This message has been on my heart for a long time, and it has a special place in it. Because when I sit down and I think back to the last year, the year before that, the year before that, even last week, all the way back to my birth, it has been some moments when I felt that all is lost, and that my family threw me away, my friends turned their back on me, and that I was all alone. Because I allowed some thoughts that enter into my mind that shouldn't have been there. You see, as I stand here today, I know that I'm not the only one that has felt this way. I know how it feels to be broken down, feeling that you can never be built back up. That if you fall, you, can, you can't stand again before falling again. I've been there when you wanted to give up on everything and take your own life because you feel that death is easier than life. But then something, right then... It grabs you at your lowest and causes one of two things to happen. You break completely and give up or you get grabbed up. And sometimes all it takes is for the Holy Spirit to grab you or to speak through one person to remind you of who you are. To ensure that you are greater than the world will ever think of you. To remind you that you are a king or a queen, that you are a lion and a lamb, that you are the student and the teacher, that you are the master and the servant. According to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, we are a holy and special people unto God above all the people on the face of the earth. If that be the case, we need to act accordingly. We are greater than no one, yet we are inferior to none. We are the chosen people, and when we get down... And God is all we have. Let me show you that he is all you will ever need. Look at this perfect example of when God is all you have. And this man literally had nothing else. Everything he had was ripped away. A man we all know too well. Let's turn to Job 1 verses 1 to 3. Go ahead. There was, a, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God, and he showed evil. And there, and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, 
and 500 she asses in a very great household so that his so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east now the word says that he was perfect and that he was found upright and fear God and that he was blessed tremendously with land a big family and vast numbers of livestock now go down to verses 8 through 10 and the Lord said unto Satan has thou considered my so servant Job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and upright man one that feared God and it showeth evil then Satan answered the Lord and said does Job fear God for naught has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land here we see that Satan wanted to quote unquote prove God wrong because see Satan looked at Job as few men of the world today when they had nothing they were humble honest men who loved God and after they gained wealth they went above and beyond for the Lord because they knew it was him that gave them all that they have but see Satan devised a plan that he that if he could get God to allow him to bring death unto Job's family, remove all his livestock, remove his good health, remove everything he had that brought him joy and happiness in this world, that surely Job would turn his back on God and go against him. But let's see what actually happened. Read verse 22. In all this, Job sin sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Through all he went through, when his friends talked down upon him, when the woman he laid down beside at night told him to curse God and die he never charged God foolishly because Job knew these two scriptures right here read James 1 2 through 4 go ahead my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith work trying of your faith worketh patience Okay, and read Psalms 30 and 5. Okay, uh, verse 4 real quick. Go ahead. But let patience have her perfect, her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and in, entire wanting nothing. And now Psalms 30 and 5. Psalms 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You see, he knew that when Satan comes into your life like a flood up to your neck and you can't move and you are just about ready to give up. He knew that if he had faith in God that he can overcome anything because when when through the storm, when the, though the storm may come, it will not stay always. It shall pass away. Which also means that this scripture is true. Read Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Go ahead. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I strongly believe we can all say, just as the song says, God has shined on me. He has set me free. Because if he didn't, we wouldn't be here today. And we wouldn't be able to rejoice in scripture like these. Read Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 9. Hallelujah. Good word, brother, good word. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Under the Lord with thy substance, and with the fruit, first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall, be bur shall burst out with new wine. If you acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. It shall be health to thy navel, marrow to thy bones. In other words, he will be the air to your lungs, the teeth to your smile, the yeast to your bread, the battery to your flashlight, the potter to your clay, even the sugar to your Kool-Aid. Allow me to give you two more examples of what to do when God is all you have. Turn to 2 Kings 4, verses 8 through 10. You can go ahead. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and the constraint 
and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. Now here we see that the man Elisha came upon a great woman and her husband, who gave him bread to eat and fixed him a place to stay. Now let's skip down and see what the man of God does for this favor unto the woman. Let's skip down to verses 14 through 17. And he said, What then is, is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she, she has no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman, con yeah, you're right. and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha hath said unto her according to the time of life. It says that she had no child and that her husband was old. And the prophet spoke into her life that by this time next year she will embrace a son. And she did according to the time of life. But let's keep reading and see what happens next. Skip, skip down to verses 18 through 20. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a, la to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Now the son which was spoken to her life died. And when he was grown... When he was a grown child that she didn't even ask for. Now, at this point, it's safe to say that the woman was torn completely apart. And let's read what this woman said unto the man of God. Read verses 28 through 37. Then she said, did I desire, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of thy child, of the child. And the, and the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and, to, and told him, saying, the child is not awake. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went, in, he went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon, upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he, stretched upon, and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said call this Shunammite so he called her and when she was come in unto him he said take up thy son then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out and Elisha came again to give she asked him did I ask for a son, and did I not say, do not lie to me? You see, when the first man came in and laid the staff upon the child, he still laid asleep. This woman was completely in the hands of the father. She had to have complete faith in the man of God and in God because that's all she had to have faith. That's all she had. She had faith if that she didn't uh, and she didn't allow discouragement to set in to set in and lower her faith because the first man couldn't get him to live again she was fixed that if this man of god can speak life into her womb that he can speak life into her son that he may live again have you ever been in situations when it seems that like nothing can go right and things take a turn for the worse and all you have to lean on is god and his word Let's read one more place where the faith of a woman was completely in the father. 
Let's read Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. Go ahead. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And, but he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast, it to, and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. But be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You see, when the world has thrown you away, your family talks down upon you. Friends don't look at you the same. Even the church turns you away and tells you to be gone and take your matters elsewhere. Your child falls ill to the point of death, and all you have is your prayers and your faith. Then hold fast to every ounce that you have. The woman looked the father in the face, even after he said that he did not come but to help the lost sheep of Israel. She still had faith in him to say even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Even if she got leftover blessings, that's all she, that's, hold on, excuse me. Even if she got leftover blessings, that who she was didn't matter, but because she had the uttermost faith in him and over her child, and over, she had the other most faith in him and, and only him that he had to do something. And by her faith, she was able to obtain mercy over her child that she was able, that she was made whole again. It seem, excuse me, it reads that you see our father told us to never be dismayed and always to remember what he told us in John 14 and 27. Peace is what he leaves with us, not like the peace of this world can offer. Like when some people's favorite team called the Cowboys finally makes it past the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> when you get a new car, when you get a new house, when you even have money in your pocket, you see these are things that the world will offer to give you, to give you peace, but none of them but none of them can compare to what the Father can give you. You know what I'm going to you know what? I'm going to let the word speak for itself. Read first Corinthians two and nine. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I told you there is nothing that this world can offer you that the Lord can give you even better. See, no matter what you're going through, when you look into your bank account and only see 63 cents, when you have bills coming up and you don't get paid until the end of the month, when you have to decide between either to eat or to put gas in your car, when you have a car accident and you walk away looking at the vehicle and then yourself wondering, how am I still alive? When your children and your spouse fall ill and you stay before God night and day praying, wondering if he's even listening. When you lose someone you love like a brother, a sister, a mother, father, son, or daughter, a husband, even a wife. When death comes in and removes people that we feel should still be with us today. When disease comes in and, plague, and plagues you for years to the point to where for you were for sure death is coming soon. When you, when you adapt a new way of living and you give it your all and your children and your family and friends talk down upon you. When you walk out your home and your car is in a blazing fire and you in a blazing fire, when your mind is not as strong as it once was, when you begin to fall and lose all and lose all you have between and lose all you have between your car getting told, grades dropping, even you having a surgery, being confined to a bed 23 out of 24 hours a day. When you are on your job and people pretend that they don't see the hard work that you do and give every excuse not to promote you and give you the things you deserve. 
when all these things come into your life and the only person you see walking down the road is you, when times get tough, when you are ready to give in, ready to cry, ready to allow the enemy to win, I want you to remember these two scriptures. Read Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And then Psalms 46, verses 1 through 7. You go ahead. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters there, thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tab tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help, help her and that, and that right early. The heathen raged. The, the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered, he uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. I can't promise you fame, riches, wealth, even good health. But I can promise you that if you ever feel that God is all you have in any situation you go through, then I can promise you God is all you ever need. The word of God for God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. Say, if he's all you have, I'm, I bear witness and reckon with the word. The brother's topic, he is all you need. Our next brother is coming and to share in tonight. Give God a shout of hallelujah as they come. Shalom, saints. That was a good word. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, piece of paper. The title of my message is As He Promised. As He Promised. Um, I did this message for myself, you know, uh, going through certain things in life, and I had to remind myself if God promised me something, you know, it is for me, and I have to do my part. No matter what's going on in my life, I still have to do my part so I can receive the promises of God. So we're going to start with Joshua 14, Joshua 14, and read verses 6 through 11, brother. <laughs> then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to, to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people milk. But I hold, wholly Follow the Lord my God. And Moses swore unto the day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Skip down and read verses 13 through 14. Let me, uh, okay, 10 11. Yeah, yeah, you can read. All right, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we see here that it says that. The brother wholly followed the Lord. And we have to make up our mind that we're going to fully follow God in order to receive of these promises that he promised us. And let's see what happens when you fully follow God. Verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. And now read that part again. And now, behold. The Lord has kept me alive. The Lord has simply kept him because of the fact that he wholly followed him. And then it reads on. He says, as he said, these 40 years and five years, even since the Lord spake this unto Moses. And then when you read verse 11, he says, as yet I am as strong as this day as I was in the day that he was with Moses. And we have to realize things when we wholly follow Christ. 
there are certain things we shouldn't even let trouble our mind. There are certain things we shouldn't even just worry about that when it comes up on us, when we face certain situations, we should automatically know that he's going to handle it and we're going to come out even stronger than what we was when we first was in it. Now let us read verses 13 through 14, brother. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron, Hebron <laughs> for, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Ken Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And saints, all of this happened because he simply wholly followed Christ. And let us see what it means to, you know, to wholly follow Christ. Because, you know, when you read Proverbs 21 and 22, it talks about he that followeth after righteousness in mercy findeth life. Righteousness in honor. So if you following after righteousness, if you following after Christ, you, sh you shall find life. And there's a certain particular life that you should find. Now, we're going to see what it means to follow first, but we're going to deal with this following part first. Let us go to Romans 4 and verse 20, and we're going to deal with our father Abraham, our, one of our forefathers, and see how, how did Abraham live his life. Read verse 20, brother. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The first three words, he did what? He staggered not. Meaning he staggered not. He didn't let anything trouble his mind. He didn't waver in his faith. He didn't do anything of that nature. He staggered not. And then he said he staggered not at the promise of God. Read on. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So he staggered not of the promise of God through unbelief. And we just got through talking about that. We literally just got through talking about that unbelief, not speaking. He staggered not at unspeaking. He spoke everything. That <laughs> Saints, when you begin to speak some things into your life and speak that the fact that you know you're going to receive of the promises... If you got you to speak this thing. And then it says that, but was strong in faith. And we got to increase our faith by simply reading the word of God. You can't increase your faith if you're not reading. So we have to increase our faith, believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do because he said something before us. But we got to wholly follow him. Now let's see how else he wholly followed him. Read verse 21. Let's see what, it, what, what uh, Abraham did. And being fully persuaded. And being what? And being fully persuaded. Now earlier, the brother back then wholly followed Christ. Now we're talking about Abraham that he was fully persuaded. In order to follow somebody, you need to, <laughs> I'm not finna follow somebody that I'm not fully persuaded on. I don't know about you, I'm not, I'm not finna follow behind somebody's footsteps that I'm not sure of. If I'm not sure, if you, if the way you walk don't match up with the way you talk, I'm not fixing to follow behind you. If you're not teaching the word of God and not believing, if you're teaching and not believing, I'm not finna follow you. If you believing in the word of God but still not teaching the word of God correctly, I'm not finna follow you. So we have to be careful who we're following and know what we're following. And then when we're following it, we have to be fully persuaded that we're following this thing correctly. So now let us read on. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now, saints, this part, this is what I really like. It said that what he promised, he was able to perform. We can't sit there and ask God for something and then don't believe he's going to perform it. Hmm. If you ask him for something, believe that he's going to do it. Stop praying over something over and over again. Lord, show me this and show me. And he done showed you, but you ain't believing it. You got to take heed. What is going on? If he, if he told you something and he gave you something, believe it and receive it. We can't, we can't sit there and say, God, God, I, I, I want a new job and blah, 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 this and this. And then, you know, I know you can do it, Father. I know you can do it. And then you turn around and doubt the Lord a whole five hours later. We have to be fully persuaded in everything and the promises and everything and believe that he can perform it. If he performed it back then, why he can't perform it now? So, now let us read on, read on because this, this is not only for Abraham. This is not only for Abraham. Read on, brother. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Verse 24. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe... 
up on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So simply saints, it's not only for our father Abraham, but it's for also us. But we have to believe. We have to speak it. We have to be fully persuaded and we have to fully follow Christ in order to receive the promises that he promised us. And then if we don't speak it, I like how the brothers when they pray, every time they pray, they mention Father, let our, let our flight not be on the Sabbath nor on the winter when we travel to the wilderness. They speak in that thing because they want to be in a certain place when a certain thing go on. Because they know if they get there, they're going to receive the promise. So we have to fully believe and speak the things that we're looking for because he promised us some things and let us get into it. Now, I'm dealing with this follow and let us go to Ephesians 5 and see who Abraham done was following and who that guy was following him when he said he fully followed the Lord. Let's see who he was following. Because Romans 15 and 4 it talks about for whatsoever things were written or for time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. And what are we having hope for? We're having hope for these promises but let's see who we need to follow in order to hope for these things and receive all these things. Ephesians 5 and verse 1 through 4 brother. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Followers of who? Of God. Followers of who? Of God. As his what? Dear children. We are his children. We are the ones that are favored by him. My sister just got through teaching that. That was a good message, sister. That, that we are favored by him because we are his children. Keep reading, brother. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us. So we have to, when we're fully persuaded, when we're fully following God, we need to walk in love. We need to walk a certain walk. We can't talk and don't walk. We can't walk and don't talk it. We, we, we got to do both. They both go hand in hand. Keep reading, brother. And has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. But fornication and all uncleanness or covet covetousness, let it not be once named among you right. as becoming saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient. But rather giving of things. Read verse 5 for my daddy because he was reading this a whole bunch of other, other week. I want to read it again because we read verse 5 again. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. I just wanted to read that again since we was teaching on that the other week. So we have to walk a certain way in order to receive of these promises and then verse 3 and 4 tells us what not to walk after and there's a reason why I don't want you to walk after those things let us see why verse uh, Romans 9 and 4 let us see why we don't need to walk after those things because some things pertain it to us in order for us to receive it it's a certain way we got to walk saints it's a certain thing we got to do Romans 9 and 4, because we are these people that, that's, that this verse is talking about. You can read it, bro. Who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the adoption, and, and the glory, the glory, and the covenants, the covenants, and the giving of the law, mm -hmm. and the service of God, mm -hmm. What's and the, last the promises. One? And the promises. Now, my two favorite out of this, and it took me a while to understand the glory part. It took me a minute to understand what it mean by glory. Now, and when you study scripture and when you look at the scripture, it says his glory is going to shine. There's not going to be no need for the sun or the moon anymore because his glory is going to shine. But also the scripture talks about how we're going to take off corruptible and put on incorruptible and then we're going to go from mortality to immortality and we shall be like him and David even talks about let me be like you and when he talks about his glory we're going to receive of that same glory and we're going to be his glory saints and then that is one of the promises that I'm looking for is to be just like him these promises pertain to us but we have to fully follow him and we have to fully be fully persuaded in order to receive of these promises now let us go to Titus 1 and 2 and see what exactly did he promise us. Because we're supposed to be hoping for something that we was just talking about uh, when I mentioned Romans 15 and 4. And you can read it, brother, when, when you get there. We're supposed to be uh, hoping for something. A lot of people hope for cars. A lot of people hope for marriages. A lot of people hope for a lot of things. 
But I want to know what is what are you hoping for? What are you placing your tre- what, what what are your treasures placed at? You can read. In hope of eternal life. In hope of what? Eternal life. Mm-hmm. Which God that cannot lie. He cannot lie, saints. Why? Promised before the world began. He promised us eternal life if we fully walk after him. We have to do our part. We have to be fully persuaded that what he promised, he's not a God that he can lie. And I know he's not. If he say, keep my commandments, you should be blessed. If he say, if you don't, you should be cursed. We see it. We see it. So which one do you want to take part of? Do you want to take part of the promise or do you want to take part of that lake that they're going to be swimming in forever and forever? So if he promised us this thing and then why not want to receive of it? It pertained to us, saints. So, and then this is what we should be hoping for. This is what we should be looking forward to. This is what we should just always focus our mind upon daily. Now, let us go to our last scripture, Hebrews. And I just wanted to mention 1 Timothy 6 and 11, and it talks about, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, Fight the good fight of faith, saints. Lay hold of eternal life, on eternal life. It didn't say lay hold of the, the, the treasures of the world. It didn't say lay hold on to these things that are upon this earth. It said lay hold on eternal life. And then it said, where unto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So we're supposed to be laying up hold of this promise. We're supposed to be laying hold of this thing knowing that we shall receive eternal life in the end because the scripture says it goes to those that endure to the end. So now let us read our last scripture. I just want to encourage the people on this scripture. Let me get the brother. I'm sitting here going too long on this scripture. Hebrews 10 and verse 37 and don't saints, when, uh, sometimes people, I hear people say this all the time. He ain't coming. He ain't came yet. It done been all these years. He ain't came yet. All right, well, you just keep thinking that way. Well, let's read, brother. For yet a little while. How long? For yet a little while. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And he won't tarry. He that will come. This is talking about Christ. And what else, brother? Now the just shall live by faith. By what? If, by faith. Believing. Speaking. Keep reading. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Some people are not going to walk this way. Some people may draw back. But we have to move on anyway, saints. We have to continue to press towards the mark. Keep reading. Verse 39. But we are not of them who, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of our of the soul. But we are of those that that believe to the saving of the soul that's looking forward to be born again. That time when we shall be changed, that's what we're looking for. We're looking forward to that promise that he promised us. And then we're looking forward to these things. And I want to encourage the people because I, I some people tend to have that feeling of where why am I doing this? Why, uh, you know, or sometimes some people have that feeling of giving up. Some people don't understand, you know, the, the importance of it just yet. And I want to encourage the people, don't give up. Now let us go back and read verse 34, and let's encourage the people, brother. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves, that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Saints, you have something that he went back for us and preparing for us. He's preparing this promise for us. He's preparing it for us. Read on, brother. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't, don't cast away all this work that you've been putting in. Don't cast away this thing just for a moment of pleasure of the world. Don't cast away just because you're not reaping the benefits just yet. Don't cast it away because you might be going through some light afflictions. Don't cast it away because your family member's talking about you. Don't cast it away because your own wife or your own husband don't even want to walk in it. 
Read on, brother. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Saints, continue to be patient. Continue to wholly follow God. Be fully swayed, persuaded. Have patience in this thing. Continue to keep your mind focused upon the promise. Continue to stay hopeful and prayerful and hope for eternal life because you shall receive the promise if you continue to walk the commandments. Shalom. All right, come on, give God a shout out. Hallelujah on tonight, saint. Hallelujah. Have you enjoyed the word of God from our young ladies and young men on tonight? Sister Abigail talking about the power of the tongue. And listen, everything that we do tonight is to encourage us and then help us to learn how to walk in the way that God has set for us. The power of the tongue, God favors us. The brother talks about if God is all you have, he's all you need. And then the brother just talking about just as God has promised. Everything that he's promised is available for to you. Every message tonight, and especially the last three, have been in to encourage your faith. Everything that has been spoken on tonight have been encouraged you in your faith. I want to talk just for a minute. Give me about ten minutes, and we're going to get ready to let you go on tonight. Saints, a lot of things are going on in this world. The Bible said that there are troubles all around us and sometimes seem like on every side. Brother Atherai give us the text about Job. And, and again, I hear so many things. And my job as a son of the Most High God, as priest of God, is to show you or to encourage you to continue to walk in his way, likening to what my brothers and sisters have already come. I want to talk for just a moment tonight, learning how to trust in God in difficult times. We talked about this before. Go ahead and get ready to go to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 24. <coughs> we talked about this, uh, the attributes from faith. Before we, before we went live, we talked on the one that's believing on tonight. Believing is merely and simply speaking the word of God. The brother had asked a question out of Matthew, Mark chapter 9. I believe, but help my unbeliefs. Believing is speaking. Your unbelief is not speaking simply what the word of God says. There are different attributes from faith. The brother just mentioned hope there. Those are three. Believing, hope, and trusting. And I want to I want to ask you this question tonight as we go into this. How do you know that you trust God? And how do God know that you trust in him? Twofold question. And these are two that you need to have definite answers on and understanding. How do you know for sure without a shadow of a doubt? Shadow of doubt that you're trusting in God. And then how do you know that God know that you're trusting in him? And when you have that, when you have that knowing sense, you know that everything is going to be all right. Let's start this in Matthew chapter 24. We want to show you why it's so important to learn how to trust in God. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number two, brother. Let's go. And Jesus said unto them. See ye not all think these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon I, another. I want you to look at all of the things that's going on in the world. Uh, Brother Otis White said, uh, Otis Clay said, you know, you can, if you can look at the things that are going on in the world, it's enough to make you want to cry. And God knows it is. I'm not going to get into those, a lot of them, but you see it. Verse number seven said, listen at this, saints. For nation shall rise against nation, 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 and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these things going on. What did God say about them in verse number 8? All these are the beginning of sorrow. What are they, son? The beginning this of sorrow. This is just the beginning, saints. That's going to come something much tougher than this. And if your faith is not on the level to where it needs to be, it's going to be hard. The Bible said, Marquette just told her, the just shall live by faith. It's going to be hard live me to literally survive day by day. And if you're not there, it's going to be hard to be able to survive day by day. Brother Adorai mentioned a whole lot of things in this text there. What verse is that? Verse 8. Ver read verse number 6. 
and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. After all of this stuff that's going on, God tells you to see that you are not troubled. I make mention of this often, saying, because of all of the things that's going on. Let me show you. Let's talk about how do I know that I trust in God and how does God know that I trust in him. Let's look at this in Proverbs chapter 3. Very familiar passage of scripture, but it's understood by so many. Most people can quote it, but have an understanding of it. And we just want to deal with this word on trust as it relates to your faith. How do you know that you trust in God without a shadow of a doubt? Read it, brother. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Verse 5 says? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. All your heart? And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct now, thy path. we don't have a whole lot of time the only way that you know that you trust in God or to trust in God is to simply acknowledge him. And how many of our ways? In all the It ways. don't make no difference what's going on. If it's, the brother mentioned many things. If it's about your children, your job, this, that, and that. Always seek the counsel, the purpose, and the, the plan of God. In all of your ways, acknowledge God. Now, what would he do if you do that? And God knows it don't, it don't always go that way. I may mention a, a little earlier, about 95% of most people in most churches are not uh, operating on unbelief. They're not operating on trust, hope, or faith. None of the attributes, uh, trust, hope, or belief. None of the attributes from faith. I know that. I see that. God know that. He see that. I can look around and see these things, saints. And that's bad. You got 95% of the people in the and Brother Mark, how do you know that? Listen, listen, as priests of the Most High God, I hear these things, saints. I hear it in the Spirit of God. Read your text, brother. That was five and six. That was five and six? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 50, 26. The reason how God knows that I trust in him is I Acknowledge him. I'm going to ask him, God, what's your purpose? What's your plan? What should I do for my life in this situation? And once I did that, that lets me know that I trust in him. Had nothing to do by just, just having faith. Well, how do you know you trust in God? Because I got faith in him. What is faith? Let's look at this. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3, brother. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. Why come, brother? Because he trusted All in thee. All of these things come because you acknowledge God. He didn't tell you that trouble wouldn't come. Told us the deeds are the beginning of sorrow. But because you acknowledge him, he promised to keep you in perfect shalom. Finish your text. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. That's why he wants you to acknowledge him. For within him. That's the everlasting strength. That's what you're going to be able to get to allow you to be able to endure and to carry and to go on. Nahum chapter 1 and verse number 1. I want just talking about learning how to trust in him. And, and these are things that we learn to do, saints. Again, we do this. Trusting in him is to acknowledge him in everything. I want to show you, well, what about my mama? <laughs> what about my daddy, my sisters, my brother, my pastor? Let, let the word of God speak for that. And that's really not, when any of you people that come to me with different things, I'm going to always make sure that you have acknowledged him first. Let's look at it. Nahum chapter 1 and verse number 1. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. God is just... Come on, verse, verse 7. 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in what him. What do God know? <laughs> he knoweth them that trust in him. God, God know everybody that trusts in him. Now, how do God know? <laughs> he simply know it because if you have acknowledged him about a matter or situation, that, that's, that's how he know who trusts in him. Come on down to verse number nine. nine. What do ye imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Hmm. Affliction shall not rise up the it, second time. It, things won't come back a second time. So this is a word that God gave me during the, 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 what, the, the pandemic. And if you continue to acknowledge him 
and all of your ways, things won't come. He's going to let you know everything before anything comes and give you leeway on what to do. Read it. Verse number 15 says, Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good, th good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through, through, thee, through thee. He is utterly cut off. Listen, I'm going to show you this in our closing here in just a little bit. The wicked, <laughs> listen, he won't be any, do, able to do anything. He's going to be utterly cut off. Oh, all because you acknowledge God. Let me show you this in Psalm chapter 56. Psalm 56 and verse 3 and 4. Psalm 56. And I don't know we're moving on. I don't have just a few more minutes and we're going give, to give this up on tonight. But listen, learning how to trust in God and then knowing that you know that you trust in him and then knowing that God know that you trust in him. That's the main thing of this whole situation. Psalm 56 and verse number 33 and 4. What time I am afraid. Whenever I'm afraid. I will trust in thee. Whenever, if anything that's going on, if fear was there, you know the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to acknowledge God in all of my way. Why come, brother? In God, I will, I will praise his word. In God, I'll put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. All because I acknowledge him. Now look at this in Michael chapter 7. I may mention about your mama and your daddy and your pastor. I went a little bit further than your mama and dad. So you're even to your pastor. Let me help you with something there. Uh, 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 here in Michael chapter 7 and verse number 5. Michael 7 and verse 5. Read that, brother. Trust ye not in their friend. Do it again. Trust ye not in their friend. Mm -hmm. Put ye not the confidence in a God. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Even from your wife, even to the husband, from the one that lie in your bosom. The Bible tells you in verse, the first verse that five says. Trust ye not in a friend. Don't trust them. You don't have any business going to anybody seeking counsel, purpose, or advice, and you have not asked or talked to God about the situation. It don't make no difference if it's your doctor or whoever it is, your mama, or who, it don't make no difference who it is. So these are, this is a walk of faith that we have to learn how to walk in. And if you walk in it, it will work for you. God promised he'll keep you in perfect peace. Now look at it, Psalm 118. Let's go, brother. Psalm 118 and verse number 8. A lot of times, and like I said, Brother Mark, you mean God don't want me to trust in no Man, the Bible simply says that. And this is not trust like the little games you play with trust. Not like that. Read it. Psalm 118 and verse number 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Let, at, at all times. Finish it. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. It don't make no difference who they are. Even your government. It don't make any difference. Back up to verse number 5. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. That called up on it, it means to acknowledge him, finish it. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. <laughs> what, what can man do unto me? Listen, after I've acknowledged God, and I live this every day of my life, saying, that's, one, that's my least worry about anybody or anything. If God is with me, if he's on my side, and if I get up in the day, in the morning, and if I fashion my prayer by acknowledging him in all my way, do you think I'm worrying about anything? I'm going to show you in my clothing in just a little bit what I mean when I say that. Finish your text. The Lord taketh my part with, with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my... The, therefore will I, shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Yeah, deal with it. Come on, read it. That's all of it? Yes, sir. Let's look at this in, 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 in Jeremiah 49 and verse 11 quickly. And I know I'm running fast with this, but I got to get to these last two scriptures out there, and we're going let, to let you go. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse number 11. And listen here, to everybody, it don't make no difference who it is. Well, Brother Mark, I'm a widow. I don't have a husband. What am I to do? Listen, I have an answer for everybody. It's the same thing. Nothing changes. To those with the husband and without, it don't make no difference who you are. God have a protocol that's set. And if you stay in it and work, work it, it will work for you. 49 and 11. Read it for me. Leave thy fatherless children. Leave the father's children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. Let who trust in them? Th thy widows. Even to the widows, to the orphan, to the stranger, to the poor. It don't make no difference. You don't have to remain in the situation that you, you're in. 
And the only reason you do in most cases, not all, you haven't learned how to work the attributes of faith and trust at, at the relation of trust. You have to learn how to work that. Believing and hope is another one of the attributes from faith. And we got to learn how to walk this every day. The brother talked about this a minute ago. I, I read my Bible. I study my Bible. Not just to preach to you people. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank God for you. But it, it has nothing to do with that. First thing, saints. I study to show myself approved unto God. So that I'm never ashamed in nothing. I know how to live day by day all because of that. Let's look at it in uh, uh, where we're at. Proverbs want, chapter 28 and verse number 20. First Timothy 5 and 5 at the end. Do I have that? Mm -hmm. It's on the right side. Okay. It's probably saying the same thing. Go over there and get it. Let's see what it's saying. First Timothy 5 and 5. Read now, it there. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trust, trust in God and continue with in supplication. Do, do that again. Now she that is a widow indeed. Now listen, if you are really a widow and you, indeed, uh, I, I don't have time to deal with this, but listen, you got to be make sure you're telling the truth if you are a widow. You can't have, you can't be a widow and have a whole lot of different other help on the other side. You know what I mean when I say that? You know what I mean? And I'm not talking about your children. You know what I mean, don't you? I wasn't going to mess with them. He brought this one up. You, you know what I mean. Just call yourself. Don't call yourself a widow. Say, I'm just a sister. I know your husband is gone, but we got a, you got other people in that place. Let's leave that one. Come on back. Go back on the road with that. We weren't even supposed to go there. See, you mess it. You. <laughs> but one that is indeed trust in the Lord. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 26 and verse 28 28 and 26 says He that trusted in his own heart is Verse 20, 26 says He that trusted in his own Anybody heart is a fool Anybody that trusted in their own mind What is it brother? Is a fool <laughs> You but, can't, listen here You can't trust your mama, your daddy And trust me, listen here I'm not talking about not to have confidence in man Well not trust Even with that, you have to be careful with that I have people that you can ask for help from. I'm not going to people for help. But the main thing of it is, trust means to seek the counsel, the advice, and purpose of others. You don't do that. Only God. And even to yourself. Now, you can't trust in nobody else. Well, Brother Mark, what about my own heart, my own mind? Read it again. He that trusted in his own heart is a fool. He is a fool. Read the rest of it. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Anybody that acknowledges God, he's going to be delivered. Let's close this in this text here in 1 Samuel chapter 23. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. 1 Samuel chapter 23, and we're going to close you on tonight. Truly, we thank God for each of you all, Bible study group of Israel, and to all of you all that's viewing us. Truly, we thank God for, for each of you all. And again, saints, it's our job to help our brothers and sisters, teach them, show them God's way. We have been called as a whole kingdom of priests, and we're obligated by God to do this, and not just in the four corners of this building, but every day, wherever we're at, it makes no difference. Let's look at it. Uh, 1 Samuel 23 and verse number 1. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Ke Keilah, that, and they robbed the threshing floor. Listen there. In other words, they was coming for them. And they went told David. You remember that said, they said that the sorrow would come, and these are the beginning of it. Trouble is going to come. Now let's see if David... Acknowledge God, and how do we know that David acknowledged God or trusted in God? Trusted in him. Verse number two said, Therefore David inquired of the Lord. What did David do? Inquired of the Lord. In all his ways, when the enemy was coming, when the enemy came in like a flood, in all of David's way, what did he do? Inquired of the Lord. He trusted in God. How do God know that David trusted in him? 
Because he acknowledged him. How do David know that he trusted in God? Because he acknowledged him. He didn't seek the advice of the preacher, the leading priest at that time. He didn't go to Samuel, didn't go to any other prophet or anyone. The first thing that David did, read it again, brother. Therefore David inquired of the Lord. Let's see what he asked him. Read it. And then I'm going to show, I'm gonna, I want you to see how this story turns out. Listen, it's all throughout the word of God. And, and then if you want something that's more prevalent, look at my life. Marquisha was talking about the favor. If you want something, just look around. Read your text, brother. Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. Listen, he acknowledged him and God gave him the answer. Finish it. Read on. Let me, let me show you. And that don't mean that troubles won't try, try, the enemy won't try some things. Read on. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Keilah against and listen the, here, the Philistines? This, after you've acknowledged God, Bible study group of Israel, as Keisha Marquette sang the song, I go if I had to do it by myself. If, I, if God had given me advice on a situation, do you think I need your opinion on anything? Come on, come on. I want to hear that from you people on tonight. Because most people, the people in the church or in the whole audience help the pastor, the pastor, the pastor of the church and have they say so. Now, that's not the way things are supposed to go. I tell, I tell you all, I welcome your advice, but to me it don't mean anything. And I, and I mean exactly what I'm saying. I've told people in there that. I appreciate you. But if I've acknowledged God about a situation, a circumstance, or a condition, whether it relates to me or anyone else, do you think I'm going to change my mind because of what somebody else has said? You think I'm going to change my mind because of someone else operating in fear? Well, Brother Mark, I don't think you ought to try to build that church in a pandemic. I'm not going on. You don't, you, don't, you don't know what you ought to do day by day. You're going to tell me what? Come on. Come on, people. You be careful with folks like that. I don't think you ought to do this. Well, you shouldn't marry her. Huh? You look at what you got there, brother. <laughs> you should have thought about that. Maybe you should have tried that advice for your own self. Let's read, brother, before we get in trouble. <laughs> Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. That every time, say, this is one of the things about David. You can say what you want about it. He always acknowledged God in all of his ways. Verse 4 says again. Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, arise go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. Come on, read it. That, that's, that's the word of God. Read it. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought the, with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with, with a great slaughter. <laughs> so David said the inhabitants of Ke so David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. It, come on, read on. It happened just like God said, and it all because he acknowledged God. But let, let's show you, let me show you something here. Read on. And it came to pass when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Keilah. That, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah, and Saul said, God hath delivered him into my hand. Now you got this, you got Saul who was king, <laughs> once was king. He said, Here God have delivered him into my hand. Saul is not that way. And I'm going to show you that it's not. Pay close attention to this. Read on, brother. For he is shut in by entering into a town that have gates and bars. <laughs> and Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah. Listen to the here. Flood. The Bible said when the enemy comes in like a flood. Hmm? It don't make no difference. You can have them encamped in like they got David here. Bars all around. When the enemy comes in like a flood. If you acknowledge God and did what you're supposed to do. The Bible said that the spirit of the Lord. Will stop them, will lift up a standard against them. The Bible said, he, if, he, if you just acknowledge him, he will keep you in perfect shalom, in perfect peace. You don't have to be worried about encamped about wherever you at. You can be encamped in anything. There was a guy that found himself encamped down in the bottom of the sea, in the belly of a whale. 
And he began to acknowledge and talk to God. And he come up out of the situation that he was in. Finish your text, brother. Saul, Saul said God didn't deliver him. He got him in. We know we got him. They on a dead end street and it bars all around it. Let's read it. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. Hmm. And he said to Abiathar, the priest, bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Mm -hmm. Come on, read it. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Now listen here. He asking God, God, are these people going to deliver me up into their hand? Read on. Will Saul come down and thy servant hath heard? O, o Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell, the, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. He acknowledged God. <laughs> and God told him, yeah, he's going to come out for you. This is the thing. Every time he went before God, he didn't go before his men. He didn't go before the deacon board at the church. He didn't go before the older mothers in the church. And he didn't ask his mama and daddy. I want you to get this, saints. I wanna, I, I, and I wish I had time to stay with you all night to press these things in your mind. Read it. Then said David, will, will the men of Keala deliver me and and my men into the hand of Saul. And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. God told him now, come on, read it, verse then, 13. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. They got on and wherever they could get out of that mark, because they was in camp then. They just went wherever they go. 600 men walled in. Read on. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah. How he, did he do it? When the enemy comes in like a flood, God have holy angels there for you. Read it. And he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in, in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day. How, long, how often did Saul look for him? Every day. And listen here. And he couldn't find him. Read it. But God delivered him not into his hand. When the enemy comes in like a flood, if you have acknowledged God, you don't have to worry about anything. Sought for him every day, but God did not deliver him into the hand. Now, if that's not favor, Marquisha, after all, if that's not, if God is all you got, he's all you need. My question, if that's not the promise and the covenant of God, I don't know what it is. Abigail, he know what to speak and how to speak. Finish your text, brother. And David saw that and David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. David knew that. You know, David had a son. I mean, Saul had a son by the name of Jonathan. Let's read this. Come on, verse 16. And Jonathan saw Saul's son arose and went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. <laughs> Listen here. Ain't, ain't, ain't that favor, Keisha? Here it is, your enemy, or the person that opposed themselves against you, he got a son, but he come over here to your church to strengthen your hand in God. If that's not good news, I don't know what it is. All you have to do, saints, is trust in God to acknowledge him. He will do things like this that you will never understand. Come on, read it, brother. Read that verse again. And Jonathan, Saul's, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. He strengthened his hand in God. Listen at this. I want to show you something here. Uh, when you acknowledge God and you tr trusting in him, acknowledging in him, that is trusting, I'm going to show you what God would do. And he would even let other folks know who you are and different things. Let's look at this right here. Read it. Verse 17 says, And he said unto him, Fear not. For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. Listen, my daddy Saul, he's not going to find you. My father not what he told him. Read on. And thou shalt be king over Israel. What did he speak of his life, Abigail? Come on, read it, brother. And thou shalt be king over Israel. This man took his word and spoke something because he knew what was going to come to pass. Listen to what he said. You're going to be king over Israel? And I shall be next unto thee. <laughs> Listen, what, what about your daddy? He's not trying to line himself up with his daddy Saul, that's king. He said, you're going to be king? And you know who's going to be right there beside you, David? Me, Jonathan. Read on. Something else he got there. Read it. And then also Saul, my father, know it. And my father know that you're going to be king also. He can act foolish. Read it. And they two made a covenant before the Lord, 
And David abode in the wood, and Jonathan. This is what Marquette just talked about. Now, I hope I've summed up all three of your messages with this one message. Come on, brother. Let your words be careful the thing that you speak. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Know that you are favored by God, and if you're favored by God, that you are blessed and highly favored. Know that God, if God is with you, you don't need it. He's all that you need. And that he is the God that promised and will bless you. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen, truly we thank God for all of you all on tonight. And, and especially to all of our viewers on tonight. Listen, I'm so grateful and thankful for you all. I'm grateful and thankful for all of you all that, that go, uh, view the message, go back and view the message. I thank God for the, the views that we, they're getting, the numbers are getting higher and higher and higher. Uh, truly, I'm grateful and thankful for that. Uh, we love you. And, you know, you can ask any member of the Bible study group of Israel. We fast every Tuesday, every third day. We're praying for you. We're calling your name. And this even daily. Uh, we are concerned for and about you. We want you to know that we have your best interests in hand and that we are praying for you. Sister Mary, Sister Shanita, God bless the two of you all. Sister uh, Aileen and Alina Carmona, God bless you, bless you all. Looking forward to seeing you all in a couple of months. Brother Jatavis, God bless you. Brother Trent, bless you guys. Miss you all tonight. Uh, Sister Franklin, Sister Marilyn Franklin, God bless you. Mother Charvetta, God bless you. Uh, miss you, miss you. Sister uh, Tucker, Sister Laurie, God bless you. Minister Cook, God bless you. Uh, Sister Kiana, God bless you. Miss you and Mason, God bless you. Uh, Miss Thompson, God bless you. Brother Nalir Person, God bless you. Sister Emra, God bless you. Uh, Sister Janet Telford, God bless you all. Sister Wamina, bless you all. If you would give the saints our shalom and our love. Uh, Sister Nene Husson, God bless you. To our mother, Mother Fanny B, and our other brother, Brother Charles, God bless you all. Miss you all on tonight. Sister Kawana, God bless you. Sister Lakeisha Willie, God bless you. And Gentry Berry, God bless you. And to all others that's viewing us on tonight. Huh? Brother Wayne, God bless you, brother. To our other brother, uh, Brother Tucker, Brother Wayne, God bless you. And to all others that's viewing us on tonight, truly we thank God for you, Elder Jimerson and all others. We thank God for you on tonight. Uh, these young people have been studying and studying and studying to come to present the word for you. Uh, I'm highly proud of each of you all. Abigail, Markeisha, a daughter's job well done. Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah for them on tonight. <laughs> to my brothers, Brother Azariah, Marquette, truly grateful and thankful for God for you all and proud of you. Thank God for your, your work in the kingdom here with me. Listen, uh, you know, God couldn't have blessed uh, me to be overseer of any greater people than you people. Truly, I'm grateful to God for you. I thank God for your labor and your love. I thank God how you have that hunger and thirst for righteousness. I thank God for how you take time to read the word of God. You don't mind reading the word of God. I've been to people, and when you got a person that complain about all of them scriptures, and that's too much, and that's that. You run from those people. I'm grateful that you guys love the word of God. To all of our mothers, Sister Jimerson, Lady Duncan, and to all of you all, our mothers that's not here, Mother Fanny being all of the ones that's not here, and to our brother, I'm truly grateful and thankful for, to God for you, for you all that labor in the word of God. Um, I pray God's blessing over you daily. And, and again, I just want you to know that we're grateful and thankful to God for you on tonight. Keep up the good work, saints. Um, all, this, all, all the word of God is going to do is going to strengthen your faith. You're going to know more about him. And, and with doing those things, nothing, nothing can harm you or overtake you. People that try to insist themselves against us, God has given us every, everything he's given us to do in the word of God. And if we follow what he said do in the word of God, we don't try to take the matter in our own hand. We have Sister Jimerson will bear witness with you that God will work things out for you. You don't, you don't fight. Let him do those things. We keep our mouth and learn how to do it. That's why the Bible said when you come to church, 
Sit down. Be slow to speak, but quick to hear. Sit down and learn something. And that way, if the enemy do try to come in like a flood, you know that God will deliver. We bless God for you again. We love you. We appreciate you. To those of you all that's viewing us, we love you. We appreciate you. And truly, we thank God for each of you all on tonight. If you would stand to your feet, we're going to release the blessings into your life. Uh, on tonight. Let me just say just a quick word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Father, we come before you in the name of Emmanuel. So grateful and thankful for this time that we've had to your sons and daughters to be able to share in the word, in your word on this night. Father, as we are the one that you call, we are the one that you've chosen to do your work. Father, as we've laid your word tonight before your sons and daughters here and to all that will view us and hear us, Father, bless your people as you promised. The text said, and we read it in Hebrew, you're not a God that you can lie. Everything that you promised for this day, your Sabbath day at the sitting of the sun, how you promised that you would feed the, your people with the heritage of Jacob, how you would allow us to ride on the high places of this earth. Father, how you promised that you would remove Sickness and disease, and that even sickness and disease couldn't come near your sons and daughters. How you promised that we would be blessed and prosperous, and all that we put our hand to do, even in the city or even in the country. Father, that we would be above all people, that people would be afraid of us when they hear and know that we are your sons and daughters and that are called by your name. Father, I speak the blessings of God that in the lives of these people, that all, Father, and especially, you said be good to all, but especially the household of faith, especially to the Bible study group of Israel, that they are the lender and never no more the borrower. Father, that they're blessed in every area of their life and to all their viewers, Father. Father, I pray your shalom and release your shalom, your peace into their lives on tonight. Pastor Richard Wade, Bishop Donald Smith, Lady Smith, holding this over Dr. Shara Mitchell. I pray all of these blessings of what we've asked, Father, and I thank you for all the things that you have been and that you are doing. Again, to all of these, Father, that have viewed us, that have looked into your word on tonight. Father, give them that knowing. Speak to them in dreams tonight. Give them visions. To let them know, Father, that because they viewed and listened to your word through your sons and daughters on tonight, you promised that you would do things in their life. Speak to them. You said you speak in one way and man don't perceive. You speak twice and they still don't understand. But, Father, as you speak on dreams and visions to them tonight because of what's been spoken to them, let them know that you are going to turn things around. Sister Katrina Thompson, looking on them all this night. Father, over this town and city that we're in, Lamar, wherever your sons and daughters may abode, Father, bless and keep. We glorify and praise your name. Whatever lifting hands, saints. Priest of God, I release the blessings of God Almighty into your life. Come on, give him a shout of hallelujah for it on tonight. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We bless God for you again to those on tonight. We pray uh, sweet sleep over you and you all, Bible study group of Israel. We look forward to seeing you in this place for worship in the morning, 9 a.m. Amen. Amen. Come on early and get you some breakfast, some cereal. All right.